Well, as it's a pretty nice afternoon and we've got the anniversary of the Battle of Cheriton, 29th of March, 1644, coming up next week, I thought that I'd just pop down to the battlefield and just have a little look at what we can see here. So this was the scene in March 1644 where the parliamentarians under Sir William Waller and the royalists under Ralph Hopton and the Earl of Forth clashed. Um, despite the fact that the royalists were somewhat outnumbered, they probably had about 6,000 men to Waller's 10,000. They were very keen to bring the parliamentarians to battle. And it was here, just outside of Oxford, not far from Winchester, that the two armies met. Interestingly, Hopton and Waller were old pals. They'd fought together in the Thirty Years' War, maybe 20 years before this. But by this time, they were commanding opposing armies. Uh, what you've got, basically, is, uh, is high ground in front of us. And I'm standing in front of high ground behind us here, which was where the Royalists were drawn up. And that high ground over in the distance there is where the parliamentarians almost certainly were deployed. There's been some debate over the years about this, but in fact, a certain amount of archaeological discoveries and a reconstruction of the historic landscape really confirms that the traditional site, i.e. this site, is the correct place for the, the battle with the village of Cheriton over to the distance here. And coming round in the uh, sort of easterly direction, you have Cheriton Wood. Uh, beyond the, the pylon there. It was somewhat smaller than it is today. It's been replanted with a uh, selection of more modern trees, but it definitely stood there at the time. And it was very important because it rather controlled the battlefield. If you uh, occupied that wood, you essentially uh, um, controlled these valleys in, in front of you. And the parliamentarians realised this, and William Waller uh, sent troops under a chap called, called Leighton into the wood to, uh, to capture it early on the, on, the, on the 29th. The Royalists responded by mounting an attack of their own um, under a, uh, an officer called Appleyard. He gathered together troops from a variety of regiments, and they drove the parliamentarians out of the wood, which gave the Royalists the advantage. They now controlled uh, this valley in front of us. And their decision was that, given that they were outnumbered, that they would stand on the defensive now, leaving the parliamentarians the choice of either attacking under a disadvantage or withdrawing. Oh, well and good, but in fact it didn't work out that way because some of the royalists over on the far right of the, of the battlefield here found themselves embroiled in a, a fight of their own. Uh, their commander, a chap called Bard, is said to have advanced uh, without orders. Exactly what happened, we don't know, but it, and ended up cut off in front of the, of the royalist lines. The royalists then found themselves sort of sucked into a battle, perhaps in an attempt to uh, extricate Bard, and you ended up with a, with, with a day of confused fighting in these fields. It was a little bit more hedge, hedge line than it is today, even though there are quite a few here today. Um, with the royalists trying to deploy their, their, their horse, in difficult circumstances, look at this little lane, for example, you send your cavalry up here, and then how do you actually deploy out of it? And they were steadily put under increasing pressure. As the day went on, the parliamentarians managed to occupy, reoccupy Cheriton um, Wood. Over to our right, they were pushed down into the valley where the village of Cheriton is. And the royalists were essentially getting stretched in, in, in all directions. They didn't have enough men to deal with all of these threats. And eventually the decision was taken to withdraw back behind me here up towards uh, the town of Alsford, or the little village of Alsford, which is up this track, maybe another two miles. It wasn't a catastrophic defeat for the Royalists. They, um, their casualties weren't immense, although a lot of officers were killed. Uh, but it kind of put a stop to their advances in the south of England. And for the parliamentarians, it was a big morale booster, really, because it was their first major victory of the, uh, of the Civil War, to all intents and purposes. So that's the Battle of Cheriton.